So how many of you have been in virtual reality before? Excellent. Okay. So uh, how about, how many of you have ever thought about walking around in hyperbolic space before? Anyone? Okay, well today's your lucky day. So you're gonna get a chance to walk around um, in hyperbolic space live um, in our little demo over here. Um, so Andrea's gonna help coordinate the volunteers and she's gonna explain how she's gonna do that. we'll talk so that people are set up because we need to get you set up with the headset and everything. So raise your hand if you're interested in volunteering and I'm going to go down and find people. And there'll be time afterwards as well, so excuse my voice. Um, so join the break, we'll do some more stuff. So I'm going to say a little bit more whilst uh, Sabetta sets up and Andrea goes and finds victims. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, many of us have seen um, hyperbolic things. If you were at the, uh, the, the street party before, this is a, a hyperbolic surface. You can see it's very sort of frilly. It doesn't really fit inside of our uh, three-dimensional Euclidean world. Uh, here's another, maybe the most famous example of uh, hyperbolic space in, in uh, popular culture, this image, uh, Circle Limit 4, uh, Angels and Demons by Escher. This came out of a collaboration between Escher and Coxeter. Escher wanted to sort of uh, draw infinity in, in a finite uh, picture. So, uh, so what you, you see here, you see all of these uh, angels and demons, and you might notice that there's sort of uh, a lot of them arranged around uh, each point. So the, the, the corners of the wings of the, uh, the central uh, angels and demons, um, there are actually uh, four angels and four demons meeting each point. Let me actually draw circles around uh, through those, um, those corners, and we'll just sort of see what the timing is. Um, so there are, there are four uh, circles that meet at each uh, corner, um, and you can see there's a sort of hexagonal uh, picture in the middle of this, uh, of this in, in the circle. So there are sort of hexagons with four around each corner. We're actually going, not going to use that. We're going to use a slightly different um, picture, which is this. This is squares with six around each corner, so it's the dual of the pre previous one. Um, this is a uh, an attempt to fit this inside of our world. Um, again, it's very frilly. Um, the uh, uh, Poincaré disk version that's in this image is sort of squeezed in a different way. But the question is, how could you sort of, what would it be like to be actually inside of this, uh, this world rather than seeing it from the outside in these various ways? So that's what's going to happen here with uh, the virtual reality. Um, they still seem to be working on things, so I'm going to talk a little bit more. So the idea here is that you're going to move and you're going to see in a true hyperbolic way, which means that you see these, uh, these edges of the squares here, those are what straight lines mean in hyperbolic space, um, but they're actually gonna be straight for you. You're gonna see along those lines and you're gonna move along those lines, and that's gonna change what's gonna happen in some various interesting ways. How's it going over there? Okay, uh, almost there. Almost there. Okay, so um, the first, uh, can we get it switched over to the other computer, please? Excuse me. Excuse me, can we switch it over to the other computer? Okay. Um, so, okay, so all of you will be able to see what our, um, what our volunteer is seeing. Um, I'm gonna just walk you over to the side over here and I'm gonna refresh what you're seeing. Um, so. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so you're standing inside um, a sort of dark green room. You can look around and see what you're seeing. So this is a bit like what would happen if you took that Escher painting and extruded it vertically. So up and down are Euclidean, and side to side um, is hyperbolic. So what I'm gonna ask you to do, so you're in a sort of a, a cubic room. Can you face looking towards the blue room in front of you? Yeah. Okay, so what I'm gonna ask you to do is you're gonna walk straight forward into the blue room. And then you're gonna turn, stop when you're in the center. Take like a small step back. Uh, take a step back. Otherwise you're gonna crush. Excuse me, can you skip back a little? Um, or if you scoot over, just next to him is perfect. Um, so okay, now turn uh, 90 degrees to your left. Perfect, okay, so now you're gonna walk into a sort of sea foam green emerald room, so walk straight into there. Um, and you're gonna turn um, 
90 degrees to your left again, and walk into the um, sort of pink ice cream cone colored room. Um, and then you're going to turn 90 degrees again um, and walk into the salmon colored room. Um, and then you're going to turn 90 degrees again and walk into the dark red room, uh, turn 90 degrees again, walk into the dark green room, uh, and then turn just a little bit to face the blue room. Okay, so now you can take off your uh, glasses and see where you're standing. So you just made a complete circle. You started here facing the audience, made a complete circle in hyperbolic space, but in fact you walked around one and a half times in Euclidean space and ended up facing uh, completely the opposite direction. So this is an exit. Can you switch computers again, please? Uh, so this is um, a, a little view of what it was you saw. Um, so this is sort of walking around without the head shakes going on. So he's turning 90 degrees and walking into the green room now. And then he's going to turn and walk into this sort of light yellow um, room here and turn 90 degrees again and walk into the salmon room, um, turn 90 degrees again, walk into the raspberry room, um, turn 90 degrees again, um, walk into the original room you started in, and then turn 90 degrees again, um, and you're back where you started. Okay, so this is an example of something that's called um, holonomy. So this is um, something that is sort of ubiquitous in curved surfaces, um, in curved space, and this is what, um, this is an example we might be more familiar with. So imagine I'm standing um, at the equator and one of my arms is pointing to the North Pole and one of them is pointing to the East. And I'm gonna walk around, so I'm gonna walk uh, a quarter of the way around the Earth, walk up to the North Pole, and then walk back down to where I started. So my arms have now, they started out uh, with one pointing to the North and one pointing to the East, and now they've rotated so that my left arm is now pointing North and my right arm is pointing to the West. Um, so this uh, idea of holonomy is that when you go around in a closed loop, you come back and something's changed. In this case, it's a rotation. Um, so this is a little example of what this might look like from the top down. So imagine now um, he's starting walking um, along the blue arrow, so his face is always going to be towards the blue arrow, and his right arm is always going to be pointing towards the red arrow. So now he walks sort of forward, and then to the left, then backwards, then to the right, then forwards, uh, then to the left, and he comes back and he has now rotated by 180 degrees. So we're gonna switch simulations now um, to uh, the fully three-dimensional hyperbolic space. Um, and before you put this on, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna teach you the, the holonomy dance. Okay, so um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do uh, three different motions. So the first motion, uh, this is, this is uh, basically we're gonna go like this. You don't need to use your hands, but I like it for a fuck. So we're gonna go around in a circle like this. So this is motion one. Okay, so motion two is gonna be kind of a hula hoop with your head where you make as big of a circle with your head as you possibly can. Um, and then the last motion uh, is basically you're gonna take your head and you're gonna go like this. So you wanna make a big circle with your head like this. So this, this is the holonomy dance. So I'm gonna put you in 3D hyperbolic space and I'm gonna ask you to do the holonomy dance and see what it is you're seeing. All right. Oh, uh, sorry, I need to get you set up in there. Can you see it now? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so now pick uh, which of your favorite uh, dance moves and start off with that. So keep your head looking straight forward. And as she's doing this, you might notice that 
what started out as a sort of rectangular or octagonal window is slowly starting to twist around. So what was vertical is no longer vertical. And as she goes, if she does this in the opposite direction, she can rotate it back. <laughs> Sorry, I could really fast <laughs> Excellent. All right, do you want to try the next, uh, the next move? Okay, so this one, notice she's facing a purple cell right now. And as she continues to do this, <laughs> what, what is straight ahead is going to change. So I guess now she's bringing the blue cell around in front of her. So if you stop and look straight ahead for a sec, uh, I guess you've changed directions <laughs> at some point. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's do this one more time. Pick one direction and do it one, one uh, a few times. Pardon? One minute. One minute. One minute. Okay. Okay, so now what she's going to do is she's going to slowly start bringing the world up. So this is exactly the same thing as walking around the hexagon, just on a much smaller scale, but the effect is still there. Okay. So I guess the last thing we're gonna do, um, so how do you feel about monkeys? Sure. Okay, so I'm gonna put you in there with an infinite number of monkeys. <laughs> so, all right, so here's an infinite number of monkeys, and these monkeys are exhibiting the symmetries of the quaternions. So thank you very much for your time. <laughs>